All right, welcome back everybody. Today, I'm Peter, and I'm so happy to announce that once again, it is Muji Mondays, right? Uh, the highly anticipated national holiday where we uh, review products made by uh, Muji. Uh, in a previous recent video, I did use some pens made by Muji. It smelled like the inside of my nose. And uh, actually, I didn't really review these too much because I, I just used one of the pens and talked about it briefly. But today, we're going to hop right into it. And there's another pen made by Muji. Uh, this one right here. Ta-da! This is the uh, aluminum fountain pen made by Muji. And I don't really know anything about it other than, than, than that when I was buying these pens a little while ago, I noticed that this was also a thing. Would you look at that? I feel like it's got a pretty good look to it, don't you? Very minimalist, refined. I feel like there's a cartridge in there. What is this called? Um, kerfing? Is this design here called kerfing? Oh, also you can see I was wearing another ring next to this ring uh, yesterday, and it was fake. It turned my finger a funny color. Anyways, back to the pen. Ah. Yes, they say it's aluminum. I think the nib here says iridium point. I mean, I like it so far. I like the texture of the pen here. I like the texture of the pen here. Unscrew it. There's the cartridge. And the little capsule thing that comes in there. Oh, another thing I did was when I bought this, they were also selling uh, what I usually like to go for the like piston cartridge converters. This one, this one obviously, you know, is not Muji brand, but it's some sort of like universal cartridge that hopefully will fit in this pen. Otherwise, I'll just use the little cartridge that came with it. Buying little piston uh, refill things like this makes it so it's easier to refill the pens instead of, instead of having to buy little pre-filled cartridges like these. Also, one downside right now is that I have this bottle of ink that I like using, but it's almost empty. So I think I might try filling the cartridge before I put it in the pen. That way it's easier to get it like way in there, you know? Like so. Turn it on its side. Do the twist. Might get messy. Should have had my paper towels. There we go. Pop that in there. I think it I think it fits. We're going to try it out on this little post-it note here. I'm going to twist it a little bit to get the ink flowing. Get some pressure going. Oh yeah, I see some action. I'm going to put the back on. Test. Ah, oh, I really like how that feels, like how the nib feels. Hello. My name is Peter. Oh, was I drawing off camera? I'll try again. But look, it's working good, look. Do you guys like, I love how that sounds actually, how it sounds. How it feels, how the pen feels in my hand. 
Oh, you see how that posts? It kind of goes into itself right there. That's actually super satisfying. Oh, I'm getting ink all over it. I'm going to go wash my hands and then wipe this off, okay? Wash my hands. But I want to clean the pen too. Oh yeah. Squeaky clean. All right. Oh. Did I not clean this part of my hand? I'm gonna go wash my hands again, just a second. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. If, there, I've, got, if I've got like a leak somewhere, if I touched that, or if I'm just bad at washing my hands. But yeah, check this out. I like it. It's very slim, straight, to the point. It feels good in my hand. It has a nice texture. It has a nice weight to it, you know, aluminum. Not too heavy, not too light. And now I guess all that's left is to do some drawing with it. Right? Just got to see what can be done artistically, how it feels, how it performs. This will be a great thumbnail, don't you think? Should I look more fierce? Should I look surprised? Wait, I should look at the camera. I always look at that little screen over there. I apologize. But I have to make sure everything's in focus. I'm bad at this. Ooh. Ah, like that. Ah. Oh, no, the pen. Focus on the pen. Over here, hey, hey camera, focus. There we go. There we are. Yeah. That's a thumbnail, I think. If that's a good one, I don't really know the science behind thumbnails. Should I have my smiling face in there like that? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it works good. Fast lines, slow, oh, it even flexes some. And, wait, how much was this? I think it was only like $14 or something like that, which is a lot cheaper than a lot of other pens out there, especially uh, considering that it's made out of aluminum. It's metal, right? There's a lot of other very cheap feeling pens out there. I'm honest, I like it a lot. So far, I mean, we're gonna, I'm gonna put it, if, if I was gonna give it, you know, like, you know, one out of, one to 10 ratings, you know, for uh, hand feel, it, this would be like an eight or a nine out of 10 for hand feel. If I was gonna feel it, you know, give it a rating for like paper feel, this one would also be way up there. Eight or a nine, paper feel. Uh, for flow, also very high. I mean, it's a, it peters out a little bit of very high speeds, but that's to be expected. Also, it could be the type of ink, but I'm using Waterman ink, which does very well. This might be one of my new favorite fountain pens, especially considering it's only $14. I don't feel afraid to take it around with me, right? If I just want to put it in my pocket, take it to school, it's not terrifying, right? A lot of my other favorite fountain pens, even some of my go-tos in the past, like Lammies and stuff like that, have been like, you know, $25 at least, and this is $10 cheaper already. Anyways, I'm gonna draw, let's draw with it now, all right? Have a piece of Bristol here. All right, so you can see there that I, I flipped over the piece of Bristol paper or a Bristol board. Is there a difference between Bristol paper and Bristol board? Or really, is it just all called Bristol? Like it's its own thing. I'm a little bit confused, but 
I flipped it over. Each side does feel a little bit different. I don't know if all Bristol is like this, but I think this specific Bristol was designed that way. And one side of it did seem to do a little better than the other. I think maybe the smoother side is what I ended up drawing on. I started on one side and then switched to, to the other. Um, well, that's all I have to say about the paper. It worked pretty good. Look, the pen worked good. Uh, also, I will say I said this pen was $14, but I forgot to mention, you know, it's worth mentioning that I did buy the the piston converter, which is another $5. So really it puts it up at almost $20. Uh, but still, I like the pen. Look, I, what am I? Am I becoming some sort of Muji fanboy? You know, I'm okay with that. I have two of their products so far, and I'm happy with all of them. Maybe for next Muji Monday, I'll buy some of their other products, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know, though. Uh, I like Also, I genuinely like how this drawing turned out. I started just like always. Not a, not a thought, not a dream in, in the world what it could be, what it would be. Well, I thought that it could be anything. Well, that's half the fun of it, right? It can be anything. I mean, I know there's a few things it probably can't be, like it's probably not going to be a photorealistic drawing of anything. I mean, it could be, but it probably won't be. It it could turn out to be a photorealistic drawing of something, but the way I go at it, that would be, you know, like throwing a bunch of rice on the floor and it ending up looking like a photorealistic drawing of something. Just the the random chaos of it could work out, but it probably won't. Anyway, but I'll, you know, you look at it at the end. Tell me if you're happy with it. I'm happy with it. It's kind of um, going back to some of the blobby stuff I've gone, done before, but I'm also really in a mood right now where I like labeling things, adding lines, pointing at things. Uh, you know, in this one, I, I leave the label. Oh, I mean, I, this is kind of a spoiler, but I do. I, I add some labels and I leave the labels empty. And I even draw like a little title box and I leave the title box empty. And I was talking to someone about this and I think this is, I like, I do enjoy leaving the labels empty, partly because it leaves it far more open-ended to interpretation. You know, you you personally can think of all sorts of different things that could go in the labels, kind of the same reason why I enjoy drawing vague things in general, but also it's kind of the same reason behind the re my, my reasoning for not titling most of my drawings. I feel like if I put a title on my drawings, then it already you know, steers your brain in a certain direction, which can be very good, very useful if I'm trying to communicate a certain idea. Uh, but I feel like, you know, maybe that's kind of a cop out for me. Like maybe I'm being a lazy artist. I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't know. I think, I think the ideas I'm trying to communicate are more kind of like a full body idea, kind of a holistic thing that you get by just looking at it and absorbing it rather than you spoon feed it to you. I'm not sure. I'm not good at these, uh, artistic words. Somebody, e somebody emailed me the other day and asked me if I had, they said they were collecting artist statements for something. I don't remember, maybe for a school project or something. And they asked if I had an artist statement and I had to say, no, I, I don't have an artist statement. I don't really know what an artist statement is. Is that something like some driving force behind all of your art? Kind of like your personal mantra, wait, mantra? I just don't really... I think I felt like if I had an artist statement, I might feel a little bit cornered. But on the other hand, maybe if I went to the, the time and effort of creating an artist statement that truly reflected how I felt, maybe it would give me some kind of structure. And maybe it would be like putting up those bumpers over the gutters in bowling. You know, maybe it would help. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to look that up more. Is that something you learn how to do in art school? Um, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to say. I don't remember what it was exactly. Oh, I think also, yeah, I wanted to say that I actually, as good as this pen worked for drawing, I still don't think that fountain pens in general, including this fountain pen, uh, are my favorite things to use for drawing just because I don't like the, you know, the very, the very, the variation in like line width, for example, stuff like that, how you press down and the pen can, fl the nib can flex a little bit, stuff like that. There's just, it's a, this is a very personal preference sort of thing. Like, as you can see, I think it worked very well for drawing, uh, except for really the fact that I have ink in here that smudges very easily. And there was a lot of smudging going on. Uh, 
like that's not a that's not a problem with the pen at all. That's just a problem with all the, the how fountain pen ink works. It's not like waterproof. Uh, so like a lot of the like usually I use like if I was using like a regular Muji pen like the gel ink or the you know a Rotring Isograph with the India ink. That stuff, once it dries, it doesn't smudge nearly as easily. A lot of this stuff looks dry. You put your hand on it, it'll still smudge. So this page was getting real smudgerific, and I just had to ignore it, move past it, work with it, absorb. I mean, just kind of, yeah, like work with the ambiance of the smudge, you know. Maybe it kind of added a patina to the drawing. Ugh. It's one of those commentaries where I feel like I'm getting out of breath for no reason. Maybe I'm not sitting up straight. I'm sitting up too straight. Oh, but yeah, I th but I think I would like this, prefer this pen more. I might take it to school and try it, to use it for like taking notes in class and stuff because it is really fun to write with. I'm writing the words taking notes in class on a scrap piece of paper right here, right in front of me right now. In class. Boom. I think it'd be great for that. Slim, light, slim. Smooth, suave, savvy. It's cool, man. Mm, all right, I gotta, I gotta go, do some private burping or something. So, I'm gonna do that on my own time. Maybe put it on my other channel. We'll see. All right, goodbye, y'all. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.